Chris Oporamia, Your Excellency, the Deputy Prime Minister of Kenya, uh, Mr. Wenta. Karikosokari. These are people already inside. Karikosokari. Omiyo, Okada Wachopange, Saraj, Akwane Joma Bey, Okamano Te. Karikosokari. Kenakwane Leadership Te. Mama Beika, eh, right from the governor, the women rep, the senator, the chairman of that party, and the entire Mabei ODM leadership. You can go to who will be able to get the money. Can you go to the country? 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 The coming Prime Minister, Mari Republic of Kenya, under the leadership of Raila Amolo Odinga. Karikosokai, Kodalawa, Malich, Pokone Omabeika, and Eriko Guru Chamo Chuokama, Ochamo Monica. Hey! Hey! You're the Prime Minister. Well, I will close my this is your time to talk to Anaichi Wahoma. Wapi makofi ya musali ya budamadi! Kenya 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 Kenya
Today I'm talking to the youth of Kenya and we are telling them that this struggle is for the youth of our country. The future belongs to the youth and I've written a book that is titled The Quest for Nationhood, Roadmap to Our Future how Kenya can recover lost ground and achieve prosperity for all. In this book, I'm chronicling the, our journey as a people of Kenya from independence in 1963 to where we are today. And I'm asking like Chinua Chebe did ask, when, when did the rain begin to beat us? When did the rain begin to beat us? Because he said, if you want to know how long it has rained on you, then you must remember when the first drop of rain fell on you. So you have said here how we were united before independence, how the nationalist movement became divided after independence, how we were two parallel forces fighting we in two opposite directions. And why we are where we are. Because I'm saying that when we got independence in 1963, Kenya's economy was equal to that of South Korea. In terms of GDP, in terms of per capita income, in terms of poverty levels, in terms of literacy levels, in terms of industrialization, in terms of agricultural production, Kenya and Korea were equal. 54 years down the road, Korea's economy is 45 times bigger than that of Kenya. You ask yourself, what did the Koreans get right, which Kenya has got wrong? Because unless we change direction, in another 54 years, we will be just where we are, and Korea will continue to move ahead of us. So we must change tact and reinvent ourselves as a people. We create that new Kenya where people are not divided along ethnic lines. Where your name does not be, become the only factor which will qualify you for get a job. I'm saying that these people have rigged everything, including rigging the future of our youth. Our youth future has been rigged completely. You have no future. From childhood, the child is like a machine. From nursery to primary school, you are told to obey your teachers. You become an obedient uh, child. You go to high school, you become an obedient student. You go to university, you become an obedient student. Diligent, work hard. All the times, our youth are conditioned to obey orders. But then when they come out, after all that toiling and hard work, misery await them outside. You find people who have come from high school with certificates but no jobs. University graduates are toiling, loitering on the streets. Some of them are 
operating as a turtle without other than border border operators. Some of them are completely jobless. 12 million youth are completely jobless. No jobs. Yet you'll find that some of them who are students, the government is demanding for them to repay the loan which they were given when they were studying at the university. How do you pay a loan without a job? A job. And when elections come, they come and rally you along as the clients. Oh, mutu wa kwetu. Sisi kama watu duungani pamoja. Tige kuro kwa mutu yako. Mutu yako ya tainini, taka taka. We need to invent the nation that is called Kenya. Where people are united the way we say in our national anthem. Lord, bless this land of ours. Uh, 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 justice be our shield and defender. And we should live in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. That is the Kenyan dream as coined by the founding fathers of our nation. But that nation is all the time waiting to happen. We in NAS have come together in order to work together with our youth to realize the Kenyan dream. We want to work with the youth and change the way Kenya has been run. Change the direction so that we can try to catch up with our other uh, 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 peers at independence. Today, you find Kenyans very proud driving vehicles made in Korea. You die. Die who? The phones, Samsung, the TV sets and so on. And yet we are not even making the simplest of items, the needle. So if we don't change tact and you leave those people who are just fit talking left, right and centre, we will remain where we are for another 50 years. We must not allow this to happen. And the opportunity is coming for all the Kenyan youth on the 8th of next month to make a break with the past, to change the direction of this country. And that's why I'm challenging the Kenyan youth to stand up and be counted on the 8th of, of August and to vote for change, the change which is represented by NASA. So this is why we have come to talk to our people. We would like to ensure that all our children get equal opportunity, irrespective of the socio-economic status of their parents. That they get an opportunity to quality education. That's why we have said that effective from 1st of September this year, all our children from the nursery up to form 4 will study without having to pay any school fees. We will also create, like here in Homer Bay, we are going to put up an industrial park here in Homer Bay, which is going to provide opportunity for our youth to be able to become job creators. We want to change our youth from being job seekers to be job creators and wealth creators. And that is how we are going to be able to transform our youth. Because our nation is a young nation. We have what is called the youth barrage. And the youth can be a blessing or a curse, depending on how you look at it. If the youth are empowered, given skills and opportunities, they can be a major force for wealth creation. But if they are not empowered, they become drug addicts, delinquents, criminals, we are determined to transform our youth into an instrument for wealth creation. This, and this is what I'm writing here in this book, that we must change course on the 8th of August.